apprehension here, I think you can say expectation is the word that underscores this. Thousands of people are standing out there on the turnaround basin. All their eyes are glued to the site. We're now to 4.30. We're counting. The auxiliary power units ought to be turned on. Let's listen a little bit to the voice of the shuttle control here. ...for running the APUs prior to a liftoff. Everything going very smoothly in this count. The APU start is complete. T minus four minutes, ten seconds, and counting. The auxiliary power units can't and run for a long time, and one of the reasons the that they fuel worry fuel about this battle to count is that if they had to stop now, they'd be in a little bit of trouble. They'd be constrained as to how long they could hold. And counting. The final helium purge on the shuttle main engine has been started in preparation for engine start. The liquid oxygen replenish system has been turned off in preparation for pressurization of the tanks uh, for the launch. T minus three minutes, 35 seconds, and counting. Things are happening the so fast now that the computers alone can keep up with them, can guide them, can initiate them. Very, very shortly, it'll all be up to what has been pre-programmed, and the flight sequencer itself will know and will tell the astronauts what it's doing. They'll have override control. She's all on internal power now. Let's go back to the voice of shuttle control. Counting down the seconds. Coming up on T minus three minutes. T minus three minutes and down counting. The engine and gimbal or movement check is underway to ensure they're ready for flight flight control. T minus two minutes and 52 seconds. The lock valve on the external tank has been closed and pressurization has begun. After the tank is pressurized, the hold capability is limited to three minutes, 36 seconds. T minus two minutes, 40 seconds and counting. The the fuel cell ground supply of oxygen and hydrogen has been terminated and the vehicle is using its onboard supply. T minus two minutes, 25 seconds and counting. It's become the equivalent of a ticking bomb out there. Half a million gallons of hydrogen and liquefied oxygen which will fuel the main engines, those three that are clustered at the back of the orbiter itself. Young Crippen on their backs up in the cockpit, watching the dials over 500 displays, which they must know intimately as well as you know the dashboard of your car. The liquid hydrogen vent valve has been closed and flight pressurization is underway. T minus one minute, 50 seconds, and counting. A perfect stop. And it just sets. Smooth sailing, baby, to astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen. T minus one minute, 35 seconds, and counting. Chase planes are in the air now from Patrick Air Force Base. She's venting from the base of the rocket now. As we count down, T minus one minute, one minute 20 22 seconds, seconds. And counting. We can see the purges of the main engines uh, as we prepare for ignition. T minus one minute, 10 seconds, and counting. New engines, a new craft entirely. A hundred firsts involved here in the next one minute. One minute, mark and counting. The firing system for the sound suppression water will be armed in just a couple seconds from now. It has been armed. T minus 45 seconds and counting. They've never T minus 40 close. seconds and counting. The development flight instrumentation recorders are on. T minus 35 seconds. We're just a few seconds away from switching to the redundant sense sequencer. T minus 27 seconds. We have gone for redundant set sequencer start. T minus 20 seconds and counting. You could hear a pin drop. T minus 15, 14, 13. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. We've gone from the end of the
tower. Here's the tower. And now she's going into her pole program. She's rolling to the right. A pillar of flame and a pillar of smoke from those solids. She's 15 seconds into the program. She's heading up and she's looking good. Let's see if we can hear anything at all from those men of space who are riding the shuttle into a brilliant morning on a plume of absolute shuddering, powerful flame on a pillar of smoke that stretches from the rocket itself all the way back to the ground as if something were growing like Jack and the Beanstalk, a giant pillar of smoke that isn't moving. It's as solid, so solid you could almost climb it. They're up to 45 seconds now. They're approaching maximum dynamic pressures, the place where they'll undergo the most recurring of all of it. Roger. A message back at one minute into the flight, an incredible view, white, plume, a pillar of smoke from the solid rockets that is absolutely incredible. Columbia, Houston, you're going throttle up. Roger, go throttle up. They've gone down through 65% of full throttle to get through max cube. They've done that. Now they're back to 100%. Rising into an absolutely clear blue sky. I see people shuddering from the shock wave of that. It hit us, too. Let's see if we get any communication at all from them. They've been pretty silent people so far. Roger, Columbia, on a nice ride. You're lofting a little bit. Uh, you'll probably be slightly high at staging. One minute, 45 seconds. Coming up on go, go, go. Columbia, you're in negative seats. Means so they can't eject up now. Says, negative uh, seats. Uh, Thing off. Too high for ejection seat use. Columbia, your goal for SRB step. Solid rocket separation is go. It should be happening any second. Two minutes, four seconds. Standing by for SRB SEP confirmation. You want to get rid of them now? They've expended them. And we see Roger the result of that here. Okay. Mark, uh, two minutes, 20 seconds. Confirm solid rocket booster set. They've got Mark, the uh, two solids. minutes, 30 seconds. So Onboard on guidance is converging his program. Columbia is now steering for his precise window in space for main engine cutoff. They have Mark, ways two minutes, to go 40 seconds. That. Columbia now 39 nautical miles in altitude, uh, 42 nautical miles downrange. Mark, uh, two minutes, uh, 50 seconds. Columbia. Columbia, you're looking a little hot. All your calls will be a little early. Okay. Columbia now has two engine Rota capability. Mark, get to Rota, Spain. It's Three lost minutes. an engine now. Young and Crip and Rayleigh moving out now. Velocity now reading uh, 6,200 feet per second. Going thousands of miles an hour. Mark, uh, three minutes, 15 seconds. Columbia now 51 nautical miles in altitude, 66 nautical miles down range. Velocity now reading 6,500 feet per second. They're coming up to the point in about a minute when they can't get Mark, back uh, here. three minutes, 30 seconds. Columbia now 55 nautical miles in altitude, 78 nautical miles down range. A little faster, quicker than they Mark, thought. Mark, uh, three minutes, 40 seconds. Uh, standing by for a return status check and mission control by Flight Director Neil Hutchinson. Columbia given a green to continue. Just a dot in space, just a little sapphire Mark, point. Three minutes, the blue 55 line now. seconds, standing by for a press to Miko, which says Columbia should lose one engine. Columbia, press stand by, press to Miko. Columbia continues flying forward, coming up on Mark, the return. For Miko. Roger, press for Miko. Miko is main engine cutoff. They're going to press ahead to that point. Mark, uh, four minutes, eight. Columbia, stand by for negative return. Mark, negative return. Right. Math is good. Mark, uh, four minutes, 25 minutes. So they can't Five get seconds. here. With that, Outstanding. With that they call say. up from okay. Capcom, Capcom, Brandon Stein, Columbia now committed to space travel. Young and Crippen can no longer turn around and return to the launch site. Columbia, Houston, uh, we're showing both Holmes PC transducers off scale high. Mark, uh, four minutes, uh, 45 seconds. The uh, flash evaporator is activated on board to cool Columbia. Uh, 
Roger, stand by. We'll keep an eye on it. Mark, 4 minutes 56 seconds. Columbia is lofting early in the second stage. Is now being taken out of the trajectory as programmed. Columbia now 74 nautical miles in altitude, 181 nautical miles in altitude. Nominal man, man, what a view, what a view. Glad you're enjoying it. Mark, uh, 5 minutes 15 seconds. Uh, Columbia now 75 nautical miles in altitude, uh, 202 nautical miles downrange. Velocity now reading 11,000 feet per second. Uh, a status check and mission controlled by Flight Director Neil Hutchinson. They go all around the boards to make sure everybody says what he sees his You're going 530, Miko, 8 plus 3, 4. Mark, uh, 5 minutes, uh, 40 seconds. That call up from Capcom Brandon Stein says Columbia is projecting navigation and engine performance. Look good. Columbia, you're reading you loud and clear. Okay, you're clear, a little weak. Mark, uh, 5 minutes, 55 and seconds. Columbia, we just switched over from you to our voice should be getting better here in a second. Okay, Six minutes, uh, Columbia now 76 nautical miles in altitude, 280 nautical miles down range, velocity now reading 13,000 feet per second. After six minutes of flight out over the Atlantic, what Columbia, you Houston, uh, could we have the cryo heaters, please? And Columbia, your single engine rota. Uh, Mark, uh, six minutes, 25 okay, seconds. Get the cryo heaters. That call up from Capcom Brandon Stein says that if two engine failure occurred, Columbia is capable of an emergency landing at Rotor Naval Air Station, Spain. Mark uh, six minutes forty seconds. Columbia pitching over now, diving to increase velocity, decrease altitude, giving Columbia her most favorable attitude. Columbia now seventy-two nautical miles in altitude, three hundred seventy-three nautical miles down range. Velocity now reading. Uh, 16,400 feet per second. Getting up to orbital speed now. Standing by for a single engine uh, Presto Miko call up from Capcom Brandon Stein. Which means they could lose an engine now and still make it into orbit. Bobby, your single engine Presto Miko. Mark 7 minutes 20 seconds. That report says a young and Crippen can achieve orbital insertion even if two engines go out. Mark uh, 7 minutes 30 seconds. Columbia 67 nautical miles in altitude, 485 nautical miles down range. G Force is building for young and Crippen now up to 3 Gs. They'll throttle her back if they need to. Mark uh, 7 minutes uh, 45 seconds. Columbia's main engine slowly being throttled back now. Should be throttled at 65% at six seconds before main engine cutoff. Status check in the control center. Columbia Houston, you're go at eight. Mark eight minutes, four seconds. Looking good. Columbia now 63 nautical miles in altitude, 606 nautical miles down range. Mark 8 minutes 15 seconds, Columbia now 63 nautical miles in altitude, 650 nautical miles downrange. Standing by now for main engine cutoff. They should be a little over 16,697 miles an hour now. That's equal 25670 up at 220 feet per second. Roger, Columbia, Amico. Confirm shutdown. Uh, Columbia, the gem of this new ocean now in space, not yet in orbit. Uh, now standing by now for external tank separation. Now they're going to get rid of that big egg, which has done its job. Roger, we confirm the set, Columbia. Stay Eight minutes, away. Three seconds. Confirm external tank separation. Columbia now performing an evasive maneuver. Moving below and beyond and translating the north of the external tank. Uh, Young should see it moving away out of his window. Young in the commander's seat on the left. They're upside down. They're on their backs. The external tank has been jettisoned. 
And as John McLeish tells us, they're moving away, translating a little bit to the north with some of those 38 small jets aboard the craft that enable it to change its attitude and move about. Nine minutes, 40 seconds. Go, no, go, status check and mission control for the first Olds burn. That's the orbiting maneuvering system that will put them Houston, really Houston, you're going for nominal Olds 1. And for APU, shut down on time. Mark, nine minutes, 55 seconds. Columbia now maneuvering to its Olds 1 burn attitude. And using the 26,000-pound thrust engine, the Olds 1 will be pausing grade, moving Columbia forward and higher on her flight path, placing Columbia in orbit. When they come back, they'll use the ohms to slow them down. We should hear... Standing the... by for ignition. 10 minutes, 22 seconds. Columbia, 67 nautical miles in altitude. Solid boosters ought to be in the ocean now. Nautical miles down range. On their parachutes, ready for recovery and reuse. Waiting to see if the ohms on board. Okay, we got 102 on the left and 101 on the right. Please see. Roger, Columbia. They're looking good.